what we're going to do now is we're going to deep dive a little bit further into Bun and we're going to look at the underlying JavaScript engine. So previously we looked at how fast Bun actually was and how it compared to something like Dino, etc. And one of the reasons Bun claims that it's much faster than Node.js and Dino is because it's using JavaScript core rather than the V8 engine. Now, today, both Node.js and Dino use the V8 engine to perform their JavaScript, but it's not the only other engines that exist. So Firefox, for example, use SpiderMonkey, um, Old versions of Edge and IE used Chakra, but that which was Microsoft's JavaScript engine, but they've all now switched on to, the later versions have all switched on to, to V8. The thing that Jared was saying is actually he believes that uh, JavaScript core is faster than V8 and more performant and better for in small startup times. And therefore that was the decision he made to use that over V8. So we'll investigate that a little bit and see if that is actually a good decision or not. But the other thing I wanna throw into the mix there is that the browser engines are not the only options as well. So in the same way is uh, Node.js and Dino use V8, Actually, interestingly enough, JustJS uses V8 as well. And if you've never seen JustJS, JustJS sits at the top of the tech and power rankings. Um, it is a very fast uh, web server framework. Again, it's not sort of productionized, but it's there to prove speed and performance. Now, it runs purely on Linux today. It doesn't run on Mac or Windows, etc. It's purely on Linux but it runs at a blindingly fast speed. It is one of the fastest uh, web server frameworks in existence. What powers JustJS? V8. I get the point, JavaScript core may be faster and we'll look at that in a second, but V8 has the absolute capability at running that, that same performance because it already does with something like JustJS. The other thing that we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at one other JavaScript engine as well, uh, which is Hermes. Now Hermes was created by uh, Meta, which is the artist formerly known as Facebook, and that engine is used on Android devices to power React Native. So their philosophy that uh, the V8 engine isn't want something that they wanted to support for Android. So, you know, so that sort of lends a little bit of weight to what Jared was saying there. And they wanted to build their own faster, smaller uh, engine. And by the way, size is an important thing to consider as well, right? So the V8 engine is absolutely huge. It's something like 20 megas or something. So it has a real impact on your size. Whereas something like Hermes is really tiny. It's running at something like four meg. So that's how the sort of the, the browsers and the engines um, break up a little bit, but let's have a look at some of the tests there and, and go behind it. So actually the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come back to the Bun website for a second. And uh, you can you can see here, there's a little bit on why Bun is fast here from, from Jared. So enormous amount of time spent profile and benchmark and optimizing things. And by the way, they really have. If you have got uh, your web server framework running at, at 200, and uh, 45,000 requests per second running as fast as a Rust framework, then you've spent a lot of time uh, doing performance. But they are saying uh, there's a couple of things that, that made that key, which is Zig's got low level control over memory and lack of hidden control. So they think it's faster and they're using Zig. That's great for them. I believe I get where they're saying, right? I, you know, Zig's an interesting language. I can understand that they're going to get better performance and equivalent performance or something like a C++, but I, I, I kind of don't buy it, right? Because at the same time, Rust is perfectly capable of running. We've seen the Actix web test. We've seen running at 260,000 requests per second. Actix web run faster than Bun. So there's no reason why you couldn't get that similar performance from a Rust framework over something like Zig. I, I, you know, go make whatever design decisions you make, but I, I, you know, on the fact that Rust frameworks already run faster in those cases, then uh, I don't get it. But I, but what I do really appreciate is the effort and passion that Jared and, and everybody that's contributed has to building out a framework with performance at the heart of it. Amazing job, so uh, I love it. The second thing that they talk about is the use of JavaScript uh, core engine. You see it there, Bun uses JavaScript core engine, which tends to start and perform a little faster than more traditional choices like V8. And that's sort of interesting. So I'm gonna click on this to start for a second here. And, and there's a little Twitter thing here and it says JavaScript core starts fast. Console log high in bun, two times faster than Dino, four and a half times faster, faster than Node 16. 
okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get that. I, I think that will start faster, right? But just because it's faster than Dino or 16, that doesn't mean that JavaScript core is faster than V8. It may well be, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it is. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look and test some of those JavaScript engines and see if that actually is the case. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to slightly recreate the test that Jared did and then compare the performance of the engines and see what really happens there. So what I'm going to do is we'll create a new file called hello.js. Uh, we'll just bring that up in Visual Studio Code. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very simple calculation. So we'll do let 10x uh, 10 plus 5. So we'll just do 10 plus 5. And then we'll console log out whatever x is. So it's a really sort of uh, simple uh, test. And then what we're going to do is compare how that runs in the various apps. So I've already got Dino, et cetera, already installed in my machine. So if I do a Dino run hello.js, you can see it comes back with 15. I can do the same with Node. Uh, and I can do the same with Bun as well, right? So there we go. Application runs uh, for all three. So let's uh, let's clear that for a second. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use the same tools as Jared did to do the test uh, to run our test as well. So I'm going to use a tool called Hyperfine. You can just do a brew install Hyperfine to get it installed on your machine. This is exactly what what Jared did. Um, uh, his was slightly different. His JavaScript file was slightly different, but his test was the same. So we'll do bun hello.js. Uh, we'll do node hello.js. Uh, and we will do a dino run hello. Dot js and we'll do a warm up of the uh, 100 runs and then we should be able to see uh, you know what is the faster framework so it's just going to run that it's going to run each one um, and then we'll see what the difference in timing is okay cool so we've got our results back and you can see that the if you run bun hello js over uh, Dino and you run it over against Node.js, you can see so it's maybe one and a half times faster than Dino and you can see it's three and a half times faster than Node. And that sort of correlates with what we saw on the web server framework performance test, right? Underneath the hood, Bun is faster than both Dino and Node. So I don't think that's in any sort of dispute whatsoever. But that doesn't mean the VA engine is, is slower. Right? It just means that Bun is faster than Dino and Node. It doesn't mean it's faster than VA. Okay, Dino and, None and Node both run under the VA engine and, and Bun is JavaScript core. So I, I sort of get what you're saying there, but I don't think that's necessarily uh, true in that sense. So I think what we need to do is run a different test. And that test is going to be to uh, compare the actual underlying JavaScript engine. So let's do that for a second. So, so what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to create a very small, clean uh, VA engine implementation uh, using Rust. So I'm just going to do cargo new. We'll call it Rusty V8 uh, Hello uh, 2. Uh, that has now created that. We'll just uh, CD into that. Uh, we'll just open that up in Visual Studio Code. And then as you can see there, I've got a Rust file that just says, uh, hello world. So what I'm going to do now in my cargo uh, TOML file is I'm going to add a dependency to uh, Rust. Uh, Rusty VA engine, which is actually ironically the same VA uh, package that it, or create that is used and created by the Dino team. So this is actually what powers Dino. So we'll take uh, version uh, 3.2.1. Uh, we'll just save that for a second. And so instead of you watching me sit and type everything out there, which I'm sure is a massive waste of everybody's time, I will post this up on uh, on my GitHub. But all we are essentially going to do in this case is we're going to accept some arguments, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second, uh, where essentially what we're going to do is pass in some uh, JavaScript parameters to run. So we've got two parameters coming in. Uh, and then all we're going to do is fire up the VA engine, as you can see there. And then what we're going to do is from the parameters that we passed in, 
we're essentially going to um, stick this into the VA engine and then we're going to execute it. So here we do a script.run. So here we pull our, our code into the VA engine. We then compile it using the compile command and then we're going to run it. And then once we get our result, we're going to output that to the screen. So basically that second parameter says if we want to print the result, it's going to output it to the screen. So now if I wanted to run that, I would just do a cargo run dash dash release for a second. And then what I will do is is I will just pass in as my JavaScript as x equals 10 plus 5. And then I'm going to set that true. So I wanted, I uh, had my second parameter just printing out uh, the result. So you can see it comes back uh, uh, with 15. So that's kind of cool. Um, as I said, I can, my build is just using cargo build dash dash release. And then what we're now going to do is pass that in to my. Uh, uh, hyperfine tests and we'll see what the result is. So to do that, all I want to do is grab the uh, target uh, release and grab the binary that we've just built there. So you can see I've created something called Rusty V Hello there. So we will just uh, grab all of this. So if I was just to uh, take this whole line here and then add in uh, rusty v8 hello, and then I could do the exact same uh, command that I did before, x equal plus five, and then put in true, and that would execute. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna add it into my hyperfine command, and then we can compare the performance uh, against the various frameworks. So let's do that. So what I will do here is run in the exact same piece of code, but now I'm adding that extra line into Hyperfun, and then it will rerun those benchmark tests. And as you can see, and I think this is the super interesting thing, and I want you to see this, is now my VA engine is outperforming Bun. And that's the exact same VA engine that is powering Dino. So I'm gonna go back to what I said earlier. If I was Dino, I would make that faster because your VA engine, your own crate that is powering uh, Dino, which is VA engine under Rust, can outperform Bun in that particular case. It's not particularly faster, but it can run faster. So there's something else going on in the Dino framework which is causing it to slow down. And it's not the JavaScript core engine, right? It is It is how they're utilizing. And in fact, I know what the answer is, is, is pretty much how they do snapshotting, et cetera. Um, but they can speed that up. But what you can see there is that VA engine in this particular case now runs faster than Bun. So to, to the point that I was saying before, Bun runs faster than Dino and Node, but that doesn't mean that it's faster than the V8 engine. Now, if I was gonna be completely fair on these tests, then the next thing I would need to be able to do is compare that exact same test against JavaScript Core. So on my Mac, I have JavaScript Core running on my machine. Machine. If you wanna find it, you can just do a find system, a library, uh, frameworks, and JavaScript, core.framework uh, minus in aim jsc and if you run that it's going to come back with the exact location so we can take that if i was to uh, take that exact same uh, path and then run hello js you can see that I get undefined as not an object. So what I need to do is just create myself a new file, which rather than doing a console log, does a print instead. So to do that, all I'm gonna do is call a file called hello2.js. I will copy this, and then I'm gonna put it in the hello2.js file. I'm gonna get rid of the console log, and I'm just gonna make that a uh, print x. Now if I rerun that command, and then this time rather than doing hello, I do hello2 you can see it comes back with the 15. What that now allows me to do is change my hyperfine command. So I can then do that exact same test with hello2.js uh, passed in. And then we can compare how JavaScript co core compares to Dino, Bun, Node.js, and the V8 engine itself. All right, as we can see there, JavaScript core is indeed the faster framework. And, and you can see it's running uh, 
in comparison to V8, it's running, uh, uh, you know, 100% faster compared to Bun. It's running faster again. So there's obviously some slowdown with Bun, um, but JavaScript Core is definitely a faster framework than um, uh, V8. But as I said, there are these are small numbers, right? So there is possible for Dino and Node.js to to go a lot faster. One more thing I'm going to do is I've got one more framework installed here. I'm not going to go through all the installation of 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 that framework, which is Hermes. But if I was to run Hermes hello at two dot js, then you'll see that runs as well. Um, feel free to just basically look up. Uh, Hermes on GitHub, and then you will be able to go through the installation steps. But very quickly, I'm going to show you how you can then add Hermes in here as well. So if you've got Hermes installed, then all we need to do is put Hermes and then do hello to uh, .js like we did before, add that in there, and then we will just see how fast Hermes runs there. And there we go. As you can see there, Hermes is actually running faster than all of the other frameworks. So it is faster than uh, JavaScript core, it's faster than uh, V8 engine, and then it's faster than everything. So technically, if if Bun was wanting to run the fastest of them all, then I would say that they should pick up the Hermes engine because it is faster. Um, so that would be an optimization they could make. But um, but again, JavaScript for core is fast, but it's not as fast as Hermes. So again, that's maybe something they could have thought about. Anyway, what I wanted to see there is that from a JavaScript engine perspective, definitely JavaScript core is faster than V8. Um, Bun is definitely faster than Dino and Node, but as you can see from what I discussed with things like JustJS, etc., and um, and by looking at the core underlying implementation of V8 Engine, then V8 could run a lot faster than it currently is today. And and really, what's going on is there is other things which is pretty much down to things like snapshotting, et cetera, in Dino, why it's not running as fast. So Dino could be running a lot faster. So this is one of the things I would say that um, they could improve the Dino engine is they can make it a lot faster. Now, that doesn't solve the other problems um, that they have, which is the, the Node API compatibility. Again, that's something they could work on. But again, what I'm saying is love all the decisions that Bun have been making, love the speed that it's running at, um, and I'm hoping that it will really push the performance and push the Node teams and the Dino teams to go and improve their performance and, and improve their systems even further as well. So anyway, uh, hope that has been useful, and then I will catch you on the next video where we will talk about things like package management and how that compares from a speed wise and how you can use that with Bun going forward. Anyway, thanks very much and I'll catch you in the next video.